All right, joining me now to discuss this is uh, Jordan Todorovic. He is the head of political violence and hostel environment solutions at Alliance out of London. Good evening. Uh, great to have you uh, on the show. Now, uh, let's get this started. Very interesting report uh, from Alliance just a few days ago. So we've got many elections in one year. It looks like a very pivotal year uh, in terms of these elections in U.S., in Europe, across a number of frontier African economies, such as South Africa, for example, at the end of next month. So there are concerns about polarization, tensions potentially playing out in, in heightened civil unrest. We've seen some unrest against elections before the elections in Senegal, for example, uh, and all that. Why is this happening at this time? What's playing out? Well, it's, it's, um, it's first important to say that it is a concern. There are a lot of elections, as you said, not just in Africa, but also globally. Um, and one of the, well, there's a number of factors really affecting um, the risk uh, based around elections. So a lot of countries are going through first set of elections after the COVID period. And naturally, there is a lot of um, anger and uh, potential um, uh, kind of uh, problems associated following, um, following COVID. So ultimately, this is the first opportunity that they will have a say um, with the government that was in power during COVID. So that that's one of the first thing that, that comes to mind. Um, it's been a bit of a perfect storm in, in regards to what's been happening globally. So you've got the economic impact of COVID, the inflation, the unemployment, potentially misspending of pub public um, public budget and, and finances. So that's one of the reasons why I think going into these elections, there's a lot of anger potentially from voters. You've got the political elements. So you do have um, there's a large shift towards right of politics following COVID, following disillusion with, with how government has performed. And for that reason, um, I think the political element of it also has, has a role to play coming up to elections. Um, and then, then there are other points to, to address in certain countries. So there is the cultural ethnic split in some countries which plays a part in elections. And obviously, elections bring sometimes the worst in this because uh, the, the politicians and the media, of course, as well, sometimes play on these things, play on these divisions, play on the vote split of particular candidates with a particular ethnic group. So this is obviously a problematic thing in some countries um, go forward. And then to kind of round all of this off, mm -hmm. there is the global geopolitical issue as well playing which is impacting a number of these uh, political and economic impacts, but there is also the geopolitics associated with the war in Ukraine, Israel, uh, and and Gaza war, um, and as as well as many other many other conflicts in, in in other parts of the world. So there's a lot of moving parts this year, and that's why the elections are a, are a concern of ours. Okay, so when we talk about elections around the world, sometimes you get a lot of focus on Africa because we look at. Uh, Kenya's election uh, uh, many some years ago, of course, there was very serious violence uh, post that election uh, uh, back then with a very heavy toll on human socioeconomic life. So when you look at the challenges and opportunities of political and, and socioeconomic instability, there's so much political change or leadership change that we need to have on the African continent. And why elections it's just a very important milestone on the calendar every year for, for Africa. Why has this become a trend on the continent? When you look at countries like Senegal, it's been relatively stable. Until the recent elections, it looks like uh, we're going to have a, a lot of trouble, problem on our hands. Look at Liberia, for example, again. So why is this becoming an issue, a trend on the African continent? Are there a particular reason for this? Well, the, Africa has a lot of... Um, fledgling democracies and democracy isn't easy. So you do have to work very hard to sustain and, and maintain a democracy and improve it going forward. So th those are the things really. And actually, it's countries in Africa do not have a homogeneous population. So there is a lot of interest. There's also history at play. There is there's recent and past, a lot of, you know, distant history. So there is there is a little bit of um, uh, problems around this in on the continent. And I would say that. You know the challenges. I pretty much see challenges because I'm I'm probably more of a pessimist than an optimist in this regard. But you know the, it's very difficult to 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 see any African elections at the moment that go through without any sort of issue trouble. You mentioned a couple of countries: Senegal, Kenya, even in Nigeria. But also, you know, we're looking forward to May and the May elections in South Africa. So all of these 
um, elections give an opportunity for more um, potential violence and splits. And why? Are, what are the reasons? Well, there are different interests in every country. Some people really do value democracy and they're willing to fight for it. Some don't. And for that reason, there are obviously competing factions and, and reasons. Some people don't want to let go of power. Some people are happy to follow the democratic process. So that's when elections and kind of electoral handover, presidential or prime ministerial, goes quite smoothly or not so smoothly. So in, in a nutshell, really, there are sort of junior weak democracies. There are some pledging democracies, but you have to work at it. And this is, I think, the trend in Africa is a lot of the issues that you see around it are um, uh, around elections, around uh, potential uh, views of injustice, of particular groups of people. But democracy is there in an ideal world to help everybody get on. But actually, sometimes it does create um, divisions and opportunities to speak about divisions and problems that each group is facing. Uh, very interesting. But if we move to Europe, uh, I'm sure there's hardly not in recent years of memory that you talk about electoral violence. But again, if we look at the uh, Ukraine, Russian, Russian Ukraine war and, and, and the whole new uh, world horizon where we find ourselves. So do you think that the European elections in June could mean a completely different horizon for Europe from the Europe that we've known hitherto, and now with the Middle East crisis also on our hands, with all the sabah rattling and firing and whatever, uh, do you think Europe elections will no longer be as, as we all thought it had always been? Again, with Brexit, by the way. So this is going to be a major election in, in Europe since the yeah. Brexit, by the way. Yeah, the, well, the, the European Union elections themselves are coming, coming up, and I think What's been noted over the last four or five years is the shift, maybe more three to four years actually, has been shifted to the right of, of the political spectrum. And with that comes um, populism and um, potentially some levels of division in society and different types of policies that you might get with a liberal style democracy and liberal style um, party that work when they're in power. So. This has been um, this has been the trend, and I think we'll see that continue. Maybe the United Kingdom is uh, one of the very few that will buck that trend, but we've got to see that later on in the year. But with regards to the rest of Europe, what we see is the rise of the far right, which will also see the populist pop, uh, populist policies, uh, which will also see anti-immigration policies. Um, we may see more nationalism as well as protectionism in economic policies. So you're going to have issues. Um, that you know, part, these parties that come into power, not just in countries, but also in, potentially in European Union, are driving potentially dis divisive policies in, in the country. And um, with that, there will be a shift to the right. So the spectrum is going to start, you know, speaking more about the right wing, um, traditional right wing uh, policies as opposed to the, the centre ground, which the European Union was really built on. Interesting. So, so the headline election will be in the U.S. in November. The world will be watching that. We've got interest rate issues to deal with. We've got the, the Red Sea conundrum as far as global uh, business, trade, and, 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 and all that, the logistics concerned. So uh, when an, an error result could inflame existing tensions, do you see a political shift in the U.S. this time around? Well, what's going to change? What was the horizon from Aliens? What do you think lies ahead? Yeah, that's the billion dollar question. I think um, I, it's, very, it's very hard to answer that. But there is a potential uh, presidential change in the US, of course. Um, and it could mean a number of things, actually, for the US and globally. Um, I think globally, if there is a, a shift, a change in pre presidents, uh, obviously to Donald Trump, you'd imagine if he wins the candidacy. Um, for the for the Republican Party, there could be a change in the uh, um, international politics of the United States. And actually, I'm I'd be um, I'd be wrong to second guess <laughs> what that might mean. But ultimately, it will be a change from the I would say the the steady uh, arm that Joe Biden has provided over the last um, three or four years of of his presidency. Um, in terms of the local impact, yeah, well, this is this depends on how the voting. Uh, works out and whether the margin of victory or um, defeat, uh, uh, depending which hand they look at, is small or large, whether there's any dispute in, in the results, whether there's any 
issues with um, with AI or cyber or kind of um, sort of hacking and, and problematic machines as we've seen in the past. So um, these are the things that will impact it. And actually, it's important to control the narrative and, and dub it down, actually, because a lot of the time around elections, emotions are high, um, as we saw um, in US in, in 2020 and 2021. Um, so we, we've got to really be conscious that um, not everything is as it seems, first and foremost, but actually we've got to really trust the process in, in arguably the um, one of the largest democracies in the world. So there could be an impact in the country. Um, and as we've talked about in our report that we released a few days ago, um, the, the potential for violence on the streets in, in a number of these key cities and potentially swing states is it's quite, uh, it's quite high. So these are our views. And uh, yeah, of course, I mean, there could be a number of other impacts, but we don't know the results yet. Okay, so, so to, to sum it up, uh, what are some of the recommendations that Alliance has for businesses? Because when uh, political uh, elephants, uh, as the saying goes here in Africa, fight, uh, the grass are the ones who kind of, so economy, people, poverty, uh, social, uh, yeah. everything else uh, pale into insignificance when the political actors get on the political uh, microphone and they go began talking and looking for votes and what have you. So do, how should businesses and organizations prepare for potential risks around all these elections we're talking about in Africa, in the US, in Europe and elsewhere? Well, it depends a lot on the size of the business. And I think the type of business that you are, so what you do, the occupancy is really important. Um, you should also, as a company, try to understand wh wh where your footprint is. And what, by, what I mean by that is you may not be the target yourself specifically for protests, but you may be next to a, a city hall or a courthouse or a, or a transportation hub, which might impact obviously your own business. So it's really important to understand, understand your locations. And then as a business it, you, itself, understand where you are on the kind of the political risk spectrum. Um, are you likely a target um, during a, a strikes, right, a civil commotion incident or a protest, or are you not? And then what you can do when you realize where you are on this kind of spectrum is work on physical security of your own building, um, try to maybe address um, people working from home more around the key kind of dates in an election. Um, we could also um, look at potentially uh, training, new different types of training for staff to avoid uh, issues if possible. Obviously, if you're a bigger company and you have a manufacturing footprint with customers and suppliers globally, it's important to understand um, your, your footprint and where things are and try to kind of mitigate these by potentially um, finding alternative suppliers. 